Hello, Amaya. Um, I thought rather than typing this uh, critique, for want of a better word, bit of feedback, um, rather than typing it up, I'd record a little video for you because I also wanted to show you a couple of things that you might want to try in your Moodle course. First of all, thank you so much for trusting me to come in here. And I promise to uh, leave it all as is um, and, and, and let you decide whether you want to go ahead with anything. So you've obviously done heaps of work. Um, it, it's incredibly rich, um, especially I can see uh, you're, you've, you've used a lot of um, uh, the media in the PowerPoint. First thing that struck me was um, it's quite text rich at the moment. So one of the first things that I probably do is start to uh, integrate some images into your site, uh, especially in these text box um, areas. The reason that you might want to do this is not just to make it look pretty, but just to give people, um, give your students an idea of what's there. So you could even use the same image again and again, or you could use an image that uh, relates to a greeting, um, one that relates to the types of uh, hardware and software they might need to use, um, and what is going to happen during the week. So you could have like one icon on each of these these um, lines, just, just as an, uh, an idea. The other thing that I noticed is that your some of your lines are very long, which means you, that the student has to scroll from side to side. This is quite easily fixed. I'm guessing some of this was uh, copy pasted maybe from Word. Um, could be wrong, I'm just guessing. Now, uh, Moodle has this neat thing where if you click on your edit summary, it may take a little bit of time here because my internet's a little bit slow. So, fingers crossed. Um, once it opens, what you'll be able to see is there's a little, little word icon, which means that I can strip out all of the formatting from Word and it just leaves it as nice um, ordinary text. So let's just wait a couple more seconds and hopefully it will click over. Here we go. Um, and then hopefully it will open. So here we go. Um, all you would need to do, you see this little button up here? It looks like a word uh, 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 icon, and you just you're just going to clean the word HTML. Because if we click this here, when I look at this, I you see there's lots of like these angle brackets, and they're all in the middle of your text. And this is what's mucking up your your text at the moment. So if we take that off again, if you click the word icon, ta-da! And then you can just add, it, it still keeps your, your um, accents and uh, as, uh, your sort of your upside down um, exclamation marks. I'm not quite sure what they're called in Spanish. But you can add things like the uh, um, gaps between the paragraphs and things like that. But it's a really easy way of cleaning up your text. And if I click save, you'd see that the label then fitted within the window rather than having to scroll from side to side. Now I'm going to um, just ignore those changes for now and go back to the main page. But that's just one thing that you could do. The other things that you might think of are um, some inter more interactive things that students could do in Moodle. So for example, Moodle has a little wiki tool that you can use actually within Moodle. So if we go over here, um, you can add a wiki, which is kind of neat, and you could ask your students to, to build a resource together collaboratively. You've already used, uh, you've already got a couple of forums in there. Um, and of course, we made the hot potatoes quizzes, and you were saying that um, when, when we met that you, you got your handle on hot potatoes quizzes, um, and you can actually embed them inside Moodle. So that that might be quite a neat thing to do. 
um, for, for your students. Okay, so I won't, I'm not going to go through heaps and heaps of different things, but I'd just like to just cover a few things. The other thing that I was thinking of was uh, you've got your PowerPoints and you've got a lot of your, your sounds in the PowerPoints. And the, the, you're absolutely right. It's almost impossible to find decent, easy to use tools where you have a word and a sound related. But what I did do is do a little bit of research into something called VoiceThread, uh, which you've probably heard of before. And a lot of people are using it for language learning. So if I click here, I found a couple here. Um, and what I will do is I'll, I'll send you these links. Um, this is just some of the uh, examples of uh, uh, voice threads used in education. The more interesting ones are, so this is, this is an example of using voice thread in the Spanish classroom. Um, I'll click on this. Hopefully it will record, but I'm not sure if it will record the sound. So I haven't a clue what that means, but I'm sure um, it would be <laughs> meaningful to you. <laughs> um, I've got other examples. So you can see here somebody's used a whole heap of different uh, images that they put into VoiceThread and they've recorded um, a little overview for each of these. You could, and we've done this a lot with um, English language learning with foundations, so this is beginner level students, you could just have one image which could just be a letter of the alphabet um, and the pronunciation. But the nice thing is each of these um, is uh, it plays automatically and you can get students then to come and practice their pronunciation on the same voice thread. So you could have it both as a learning tool, but also as maybe an assessment tool. And here's just a couple of others. And you can see this, this uh, teacher has got her students to come in and comment on this particular picture, I think, again. Um, I'm not sure what, what the Spanish means. So it, yeah, it could be, could be slightly wonky. Here, somebody's uh, used uh, the uh, voice thread for um, adjectives in Spanish. And this is just an idea of using um, voice thread for digital storytelling. So if you wanted, to, again, to test your students or assess your students speaking in Spanish as well as a pronunciation, you could get them to use voice threads. And they could use maybe some of their own photographs or find uh, photo creative comments photographs on Flickr, something like that. And just as a last one here, um, there's a couple of neat sites, this being one of them that tells you all about voice thread and also how to make one. So once I've finished this video, I will send you all of the links and uh, see what you think. Now, going back to your site, uh, something that I did notice was, so what, what I would usually say is you, you'd have an introduction, um, maybe in a text box at the side here, just sort of welcome um, and so on and so forth. You've actually got that in your PowerPoint. I downloaded this introduction PowerPoint that you have. And looking through what you've got here rather than having it in a powerpoint i would recommend that you have it in a book and this is this is what i mean about i'll, I'll tidy up after i finish so what you would do if you were keen to do this you go to add a resource click on book you then start by adding some information here so um, Let's just call this book this for now. Obviously, you could you you probably choose something different. You can have chapter numbering in if you want to. So we'll put whoops, we'll put numbers in, and then we're going to save and display. And this brings up the first chapter. Now, the first chapter, if we go to your PowerPoint. Um, 
we will probably have let's let's uh, let's call this Spanish in the world. Okay, and then we go back to here. Put that in there. I'm just copy pasting all of this. And again, this 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 would be a great opportunity for you to use images um, to maybe uh, illustrate some of these places that that you've, that you've mentioned here, um, or. You could get students in a wiki to go and find out about these places and put in their own images, which you could either use with students in the future, or um, or you could uh, um, delete the wiki and have have the same uh, exercise in the next time around. So let's just click save changes. So here we have the book, and you'll see it, it's a book, and you'd end up with sub chapters and chapters all the way down the side here. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to add another section to the book. So I just click the add button here, and we're just going to put in a welcome to the book, and I'll just call it welcome for now. Same text as before. We'll also put in an image. So we click on the folder images. Then click browse. And we are going to put in this image here which I have borrowed off of your PowerPoint so we'll just click upload there okay I, I was guessing it as Barcelona but it, I could be wrong so we just click that it's going to come up quite large because I've not resized it and it's come straight off the um, the um, uh, PowerPoint as I mentioned and something that you have to do in Moodle is you have to type in an alternate text otherwise it tells you to go away and then we just click OK and here we have the image if it's one of your images that's cool and fruity um, if you have borrowed it off the of Flickr or somewhere like that sourced off Flickr then one of the things that you'll need to do is pop in um, a, a link to where you found it. So let's just put that image source, and then all you do is you'd highlight that, and you'd pop in a hyperlink. So if you had the URL from Flickr, this is where you'd paste in the URL, and I'd suggest that you choose um, the URL to open in a new window so that students don't actually lose the Moodle window. So we'll just click cancel for that. Okay, and then if we scroll down, click save changes. And now we've got a welcome page with a rather nice image here. And the problem here is that the welcome uh, comes after the Spanish in the world. So if we just click this arrow here, that will pop up one level. Whilst that's doing that, let's go back to here and then we look at the next slide and we're just going to copy this because this is the next uh, sub chapter that we're going to be putting in there. Okay. Right, again, click on the red arrow. I won't do all of these, but I'll just show you a couple here just to so that you know exactly what it would look like and how to do it. So here we go. We'll just put that title in, levels five and six, and then we go back to achievement objectives. We can copy that, paste that in there. Um, we can highlight this and make this a heading. 
Um, and you might want to, because this is instead of a PowerPoint, it's it's a, a text thing. You could sort of say uh, something along the lines of uh, this uh, area looks at some of the achievement of objectives for levels five and six. Oops, five and five. There you go. And again, what you might want to do is just pop in um, a, 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 some sort of icon that says when the student sees this, they know that it's going to be an achievement objective. So let's let's I'll pop in any any image for now, but just to give you an idea of what it could look like. So again, we click on images, wait for that folder to open. Then browse, uh, let's go find some sort of icon. So if we go to, uh, let's think of this one here. So again, we just click on the image. Whoops, there we go. And we'll call this achievement uh, of objectives. And then click OK. And here I would just put image source because I did get this off Flickr. I'm not going to go and find the URL now because we've just been through that. Um, and there you go. And then we just scroll down, click Save Changes. And again, what we're going to do is we're just going to pop in a little picture. Clicking on Images. Okay, the picture's uploaded, so we're going to click on the picture, uh, type in uh, alternative text. Oops, helps if we can spell. <laughs> and then just click OK. And here we go. And I will this time image source. I've got my Flickr open over here. I'm going to right click and copy link location, which will copy the URL. And then we're going to go back to your course, highlight image source, click on the hyperlink button. And then we're going to paste, right click again, paste and we'll pop it in the title as well and as I mentioned before choose new window then OK and then we're going to scroll down click save changes and what you're going to start to see is if we turn editing off so this will be what the student would see What you can see is you're starting to build the chapters, which is similar to the um, slides in the PowerPoint that you made, but with more images. And the other really neat thing is um, the students don't have to download it, but you can actually put the um, PowerPoint into the first slide so that if they did want to download it, they could do. Um, and that's that's one of the really neat things. So what we can do here, for example, so so let's just go through this first. So you can see here, um, the students just click through this, and it, it begins to bring it to life a little bit more. The students get more um, images, visuals, and, and more of a sense of where they can go in the course. 
this will of course flick through a lot quicker it's just because my um, internet is so slow at the moment i'm uploading a huge video in the background so my poor old internet's groaning under the under the strain so you can it, it's you can start to see um, how this might work, and obviously you can put in hyperlinks anywhere on the page, um, images anywhere on the page. You can also embed videos into each of these pages. Okay, so there you go. Um, one last thing that I'd like to show you. Okay, we're back into editing Spanish in the world. Now, you remember I was talking about vo the voice threads. Now, let's see if we can remember the right one here. And who, oh, that, that was it. That was it. Here we go. So what I did was I just went all the way to the end of the slide. And then I'm going to click, uh, I clicked embed. And you'll see here there's the embed code. And as soon as I click it, it says copied. And we're going to go back to your site. We're going to click the HTML button, which is these two funny angle brackets. Go all the way to the end. Hit enter a couple of times. And then we're going to right click and paste that embed uh, code. Click on the angle brackets again. It doesn't show up immediately. Um, but when we click save you should be able to see it the other thing that i was going to say is if you've got a main topic you can click sub chapter and it will shift everything across um, so it does look much more like a book with um, sub chapters chapters and paragraphs within the sub chapter and then you click save changes and down here you will see the, the um, uh, voice thread all embedded so it could be a student voice thread it could be a voice thread that you made about these countries but the really neat thing would be if the students went away and you maybe gave them a country each and each slide on the voice thread um, as you can see here that each slide on the voice thread could be one of the countries um, for example just just by way of something that students could do and it could be shared with future students and it would um, include the uh, audio as well if you wanted to or could just have the images um, and just the word the um, name of the place being said either by yourself or by your students so it could, could be quite a neat exercise anyway i am now going to shut up <laughs> i think i've probably um, talked through enough um, and hopefully this video won't be too full of erms and will be relatively useful what you've done so far in your course looks magnificent it really does and you've obviously put in hours and hours of work um, these are just ideas to go to the next step um, and i'd be really really happy to help you through any of these and we'll definitely send you the links to all of those things um, the book that we've just made looks like this and what i'm going to do for now is just hide it just close this eye here and that means if you wanted to take it further and add more to it you can do if you want to delete it you just click the cross here and it will delete it completely entirely up to you um, I'm just leaving it there so that uh, because it, it was actually taken off your PowerPoint you might find it quite useful well like I say I hope I haven't waited on too long and um, you've done heaps of work and I'm really pleased to be working with you and look forward to uh, doing a lot more with your Moodle site with you. Uh, have a good evening.